Welcome to the Valley of Life. I pray Gaia has guided you here and grants you her favor on your quest. Just kidding. Welcome to AEG's Mystic Veil. Vale. This is the first game to use AEG's revolutionary new card crafting system. That means that instead of buying cards that someone else has made for you, you're designing your own cards. You do this by buying one of these transparent advancements, which can slide into the clear sleeve of one of your basic cards. The advancements can go in one of three places on the card. The top, middle, or, you'll never guess this last one, the bottom. Mystic Veil, vale, like many games, takes place over a series of turns, which consists of four phases. Planting, harvest, discard, and prep. The planting phase determines how many resources you'll have on your turn. The harvest phase is where most of the action in the game happens. This is when you purchase the advancements to craft your cards, as well as special veil cards, which we'll talk about in a bit. The discard phase is when you sleeve advancements, replenishing the common supply of advancements and veils, and place your cards into the discard pile. The prep phase is when you set up your hand, called your field, for your next turn. While you complete your prep phase, the next player may begin their turn since you will simply be preparing for your next turn. This is a victory point token. When a pile of VP tokens is gone, the game ends. And you're not gonna believe this, but whoever has the most victory points achieves victory. But enough talking, let's play. This is my player deck. This is where all of my cards and the whole game will come from. It has 20 cards in it, and that number never changes. The game is set up, but I waited to set up my starting field so that you can see how it works. In order to do this, you flip over the top card in your deck and slide it to the right. Your field is always face up, so players can see it. But don't worry, trespassing is illegal and all trespassers will be shot on sight. You'll notice that this card, Cursed Land, has two symbols on it. The blue symbol is mana, which is what you use to buy advancements. The red symbol is decay. When you flip over the third card with the decay symbol, you don't slide it over and you don't get any of the card's resources. It's called the on deck card and it isn't technically part of your field. Only the decay on it matters for this turn. But I only have one decay, so I flip over the next card. This one's blank. No decay, no mana, no nothing. This is a card we'll be able to build however we want. I still have only one decay showing, so let's go to the next card. Another mana, another decay. So we slide this one into the field, but the next time I flip over a card with the decay symbol, I'm done. And there it is. So, this is my field for my next turn. And remember, since this card is on deck, I don't get the mana from it this turn. When I start to plant my next field, that will be the first card in it. But in the meantime, it's time for the first harvest phase. See what we want to buy with our mana. There are three levels of advancements, aptly called level one, level two, and level three. The level two and level three advancements are more expensive and more powerful. So in the beginning, you'll be buying mostly level ones. The number in the blue circle in the upper right corner is how much mana the advancement costs. Unfortunately, I only have two mana available. Remember, the on deck card doesn't contribute mana this turn, and the cheapest advancement on the table is the Deadwood Harvester, who costs three. So instead of buying one of these fancy advancements, what I can do is purchase a Fertile Soil, which are here on the table next to the advancements. Fertile Soil is a basic advancement that's always available. As you can see, it costs two mana, and it gives me one. You can take a Fertile Soil in any of the three positions. I'm gonna take a bottom for the very strategic reason that it was on top of the pile. Since I used both of my mana, that does it for the harvest phase for me, and we go to the discard phase. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sleeve my new Fertile Soil, and I'm going to slide it into this blank card so it's not blank anymore. Now I'm going to move my whole field into my discard pile. Now it's time for the prep phase, where we set up the field for the next turn. 
First, we slide over our on-deck card, which means that this turn, we're starting with a decay right off the bat. Here's a blank card, so it just goes into our field. Ooh, and another one. And, uh-oh, now we're up to two decay. And there's the third, so that's it for this field. That would be the end of my turn, and I would pass play to the next player. Once it comes back to me, we start with the planting phase. In this phase, I have two options. I can stick with my field as it is, or I can choose to push. This means that I can slide the on-deck card into my field and flip over the next card. If I don't get a fourth decay symbol, then I get the extra resources from my original on-deck card. If I do get a fourth decay symbol, then my whole field is spoiled and I skip my harvest phase, losing the opportunity to buy an advancement. Since I only have two mana, I'm gonna push. Oh man, the drama, the suspense. Okay. It's a cursed land, which gives me four decay symbols, so I spoil and skip my harvest phase. My whole field gets discarded, and we go straight into the prep phase. But because that's so depressing, I do get a consolation prize. This is a mana token. When it's on the gray side, it doesn't do anything. But since I spoiled, I get to flip it over. On any future harvest phase, I can flip this token back down and gain one extra mana for that turn. But I did still skip this harvest phase, so onto the prep phase and planting my next field. Ooh, cursed land. Man, I'm really not doing great on these draws. One more decay and I'm done. All right, fertile soil. Finally some mana without decay. And there it is, three decay. But this time I've got four mana to work with thanks to this token. So when it comes back around to my turn, I'm in the business this time. I've got four mana to burn, which means I'll be able to afford one of these fancy level one advancements. Since I can already afford it, I won't take a risk and push this turn. So my planting phase ends and we jump to the harvest. The Deadwood Harvester doesn't give me any mana, but it lets me discard a card from my field during the prep phase. Not bad. The grassland gives me one fewer mana to spend, but it also gives me a growth, this symbol here, the green one with the tree. That cancels out a decay, so it would take an extra one to make me stop planting my field. Pretty awesome as well, but I think I'll grab the Dawn Singer. This guy gives me a spirit symbol, which lets me buy veils, which we'll get to soon. But it also has an ability during the harvest phase. See that little helmet? That's a guardian symbol. For each one of those on the Dawn Singer's card, I'll get an extra mana. That gives me a strategy for building up this card to get as many guardians as possible so I can get all the mana. The Dawn Singer costs four. So that takes all of my mana. I have to flip the mana token back to the gray side since I used it and we move to the discard phase. First, I sleeve my Dawn Singer, and I'll start with a new card so I can fill it with Guardian Symbols. Since I actually bought from the Commons this turn, we also have to fill that spot. Ooh, look at that. This one has two different Spirit Symbols on it. Later on, if I added that to the Dawn Singer card, I could have all three kinds of Spirit Symbols on it or I could wait for another card with a guardian symbol to show up. Well, that's it for the discard phase. Time for prep. Welcome back. You've missed a few turns, so I have some new cards I'm excited to show you. I built this card to have a lot of spirit symbols on it so that I can purchase some veils as the game progresses. Here's a completed card. All three slots are full, so I can't purchase any more advancements for it. But the grassland cancels out the cursed land. This is another new one I started building. This does give me a decay, and you see it has a new symbol on it. We'll get to that when we harvest. Ooh, I guess I keep going. All right, we've got four cards out already and only one decay. My deck is starting to move faster now that I've customized some of the cards. Uh-oh, I jinxed it. 
Okay, so that's our third decay and our on deck card for this turn. When it comes back around to me for the planting phase, I'm not going to push. I'm pretty happy with this field, which takes us to the harvest phase. So let me tell you about this fancy hawk card. So you can see there's two kind of diamondy shapes on here. That is a victory point symbol. The blue one here gives me points during the harvest phase. There's a two inside, so I get two VP tokens during my harvest. The gray one in the other corner means that I'll get an additional two points at the end of the game. And remember, the game ends once all the VP tokens are gone. Okay, so now I got my points, it's time to buy. I think I have enough spirit symbols to show you how veils work. There are level one and level two veils, just like with advancements. There's no level three though. That would be too powerful. You can see down here that they have abilities like the advancements, and some of them give you victory points at the end of the game. The spirit symbols up here in the corner are the cost of the veil. They have the same symbol as the hawk there. So it looks like I can afford this azure lake for a bear claw and a leaf, which gives me an extra mana every harvest. I'll go ahead and buy this one. Veils are special cards that don't get added to your deck, but because they're always in play, their abilities are always in effect. Unfortunately though, it won't help me out on the turn I bought it on. It looks like I can't purchase any other veils, so let's go to mana. I've got five mana. Remember that the grassland cancels out one of the mana on this first card. But five is enough to purchase any of the level two advancements on the table. The Feral Chieftain gives me a VP for every Guardian symbol on the card, and the Hawk has one of those. The Hulking Thornhide would also give me VPs for playing it, but would add another Decay to my deck. So I'm going to go with the Lifebringer Seed. It cancels out all Decay on its card, so I'll pick this up and put it on the Hawk. So the next time it comes up, it won't give me any Decay. And the next time it comes up again, I can put the Hulking Thornhide on the card too to get even more victory points. Unless an opponent steals it out from under me first like a big meanie. Aww. That takes all of my mana, so on to discard. So I sleeve my new Lifebringer Seed and discard my field. Then I have to replace the cards I bought. One is a level two advancement, and then the Veil here. So now it's time to prep. Let's see how far we can get this time. Ooh, the Deadwood Harvester. He has a cool ability. This lets me discard another card in my field when this card enters it. So since I have a Cursed Land in here, I'll go ahead and use it now and get rid of that so we're back at zero decay. Ooh, okay, of course I get rid of one and another comes out. This was another card I built. I had a blank, so I thought maybe I'd see what I could do with another Guardian card. Just one more. Hey, another cool one. This lets me discard an on deck card when I'm pushing if I would have spoiled. And that's that, three decay. So, when it's my turn again, I'm going to push, since the Peacekeeper Druid will protect me. It says, once this turn, if you were to spoil, you may discard your on-deck card instead. So here we go. Oops. There's another decay. But you can't spoil me this turn. I'm going to discard this. And I'm safe. I could keep going, but I'm pretty happy with what I have, so I'll stop here. This way, I'll start my next turn with no decay, and I might get a bigger field. So, let's harvest. I've got a few spirit symbols again, one of each. I've got a sunburst, bear claw, and a leaf. Sunburst, bear claw, leaf. Looks like I can afford the Exodus Road, which just gives me two VPs at the end of the game. Or I could grab the Blooming Arbor for some more protection against spoiling. I can discard it instead of spoiling. I could also pick up the Sunstone Airy to be able to convert mana into spirit symbols and get more veils. I've done pretty well on spirit symbols so far and I'm pretty comfortable with my protection too, but can never have too many victory points. So going with Exodus Road, I'll put it right next to my Azure Lake. 
Now let's see, how much mana do I have? I see six on my cards. That means I can purchase any of the level two advancements we see here. The new one that came out during my discard phase was the Druid Song. I think I'll go ahead and grab this one. That whooshy symbol here on the side, that is a wild spirit symbol. It can be used for any of the other three. Since I passed on the Sunstone Airy, this will give me some more versatility with my spirit symbols. But the Druid Song only costs four, so I might as well grab a Fertile Soil for two to make one of my cursed lands a little less cursed. So it's on to the discard phase. I will sleeve my advancements, putting my Druid Song with the Peacekeeper Druid, and putting this Fertile Soil with the cursed land. Time to prep another field. We start with this Fertile Soil without decay. Or we'll get a cursed land right away. Still got a couple of these blank ones, I guess. This is a weaker card I made, but it's got quite a bit of mana on it. The next decay is gonna end me though. Wow, it looks like I went through my whole deck in less than three turns. So I'm gonna shuffle my discards and go from there. Shuffling, shuffling. Just pretend I'm saying something clever here. Okay, and now we flip over the top card. And of course I don't have any growth out, so that's three decay, and I'm done for this turn. All right, so when it comes back to me, I'm not gonna push. I know exactly what I wanna do here. No reason to risk it. No VPs this time, and just two sunbursts, which aren't going to get me a veil, so straight to mana. But look here, all this mana I got. I have 10. Seven from the mana on my cards, and two from the Dawn Singer, because there are two guardian symbols on the card now, and one more from Azure Lake. It's enough for me to afford a level three advancement. Ooh, but I can't resist the chance to finish my guardian card. So I'm gonna spend five mana on this guy, the Feral Chieftain. He gives me VPs for every guardian symbol on his card. So I'll stick him with the Dawn Singer and the Podlings to get mana and victory points every time that card comes up. All that, and I still have mana left. I might as well grab the other Feral Chieftain and start another Guardian card. I'll put it on this blank. And that's all I got. Time to move on. Welcome back again. You've missed a few more turns, so I've built up my cards a little bit more and I'm excited to show you what my deck can really do. Time to prep the field. Now technically, this prep phase would have been at the end of my last turn, but I wanna show you guys what I'm doing here. So let's go for it. Okay, this looks bad, doesn't it? But just wait, I think this deck has a few tricks up its sleeve. You remember that guy, the Deadwood Harvester? So that gets rid of one of my decay right there. And there's another one, but this has a growth on it from the grassland, so we're still just at one decay. Nothing scary there. None there, but that's gonna be nice for me. You remember this card? It has two decay on it, but thanks to the Lifebringer seed, it counts as zero. All right, that brings us to two decay because we've canceled out everything else. And now I've got some push protection if I want it with my Peacekeeper Druid. Ooh, all right. Thanks to this Grove Tender, I get one growth for each Guardian on this card, which is one, which takes my Decay back down to one. Lifebringer Seed cancels out all the Decay on this card and keeps us at one. Ooh, got another grassland here for the growth. So the Curse and Land doesn't count here either. I'm on fire. 
All right, another cursed land, and we're back up to two now. So I need to make room for all my mini cards. There's our guardian card, no decay here. Just one awesome card. Ooh, and there we go. We finally hit three decay and I have to stop. But that's pretty good, right? And check this out. On my turn, since I have the Peacekeeper Druid to protect me, I'm gonna push. Okay, so the Peacekeeper Druid protects us here and discards this one. All right, look at that. So I could risk it and keep going. I bought the Blooming Arbor a few turns back, which gives me even more push protection, but I think I better go ahead and play it safe and stop here. But look at this. My deck isn't even full of complete cards, but I still made it through this whole giant field. I bet by the end of the game, I'll be able to play my entire deck in one turn. But now let's harvest and let's start with the VPs. Okay, I get five VPs from the card with the Hulking Thornhide and the Hawk, two from the Feral Chieftain and the Moon Wolf, and another three from the Feral Chieftain with the Dawn Singer and Podlings for a total of 10. So I'm going to take 10 and put it with my victory points. Next, let's look at the spirit symbols. Let's see, one leaf, one wild, two bear claws, and dang, I've got six sunbursts. Let's see what I can buy. These are my level two veils, and I have so many spirit symbols that I can buy two of them. I'm going to pick up the Conclave of Ents here, which can add a guardian symbol to a card every turn, making those guardian cards even more powerful. I can also grab the Shimmering Brook, which gives me six VPs at the end of the game. All right, now the mana. Between the mana on my cards, my Azure Lake, and the extra mana from the Dawn Singer on the Guardian card, I have, count them, 21 mana. That's gonna be enough to buy two level three advancements. Let's look at my options. There's the Aurora, which gives me a victory point for every two cards in my field. And you saw how many cards I can get into my field. Calm Weather lets me discard my next on deck card for even more spoil protection. And the Woodland Warden gives me two victory points for every guardian symbol on the card. All three of them will also give me some VPs at the end of the game. I'm gonna go with the Woodland Warden to complete my card with the Feral Chieftain and the Moon Wolf, which means I'm going to get three VPs for every Guardian symbol on that card for a total of nine every time it comes up. 12 if I use Conclave of Ints on it. For my second one, I'm going to grab Aurora. I'll stick it on the Deadwood Harvester since he gets rid of a decay and keeps my field as large as possible. I'm gonna be positively rolling in the victory points. So I purchased two level three advancements and I still have two mana left over. Unfortunately, I can only purchase two veils and two advancements in a turn. So that mana is just gonna go to waste. On to the discard phase. Conclusion. And that's Mystic Veil. In this game, the deck I crafted was really a mix of three different strategies. Guardian combos, spirit symbols to get the powerful veils and the ability to cycle through most of my deck on every turn. Any one of those strategies would be even more powerful if I had focused my efforts on it. And you saw what my deck could do as it was. These are also, of course, hardly the only strategies in Mystic Veil. Vale. You'll just have to find the others yourself. So thanks for watching and go forth, favorite druids of Gaia and restore to greatness the sacred valley of life. No, not really, just kidding. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.